Many of the experiments we do involve using reagents that are in solution. That means that we've got to know something about concentration and, more importantly, we probably need to know something about how to control and calculate that concentration when we change it. So first of all, concentration units are just ways of expressing the relationship between the amount of solvent and the amount of solute that are present in solution. Most of the time we're going to use molarity as our concentration unit, but there are a lot of different concentration units that get used in different types of problems. When we dilute a solution, we're going to take a relatively small amount of a relatively concentrated solution that we're going to call the stock, and we're going to add it to some additional solvent. The resulting solution then has a lower concentration than the original. So we start with a stock and we take a small amount of that, a small measured amount of that, add it to some more solvent, and we end up with something that's diluted at a lower concentration. For a lot of the experiments we do, we end up needing multiple different solutions at a range of concentrations. Now we could do that by authentically preparing each of those solutions from starting materials, but it's more common for us to use a stock and dilute it to make different concentrations. Both of those methods have some advantages, um, but dilution is probably a little bit more common and uh, we'll spend a little bit of time talking about that. Let's jump in and just look at an example. You have prepared a glucose solution by taking 85.00 milliliters of a 1.482 molar glucose stock, there's that term stock solution, and diluting it to 200 milliliters with water. What is the concentration of the new solution? Let's take a look at this one bit by bit. Now, first of all, just a quick little note. The way this problem was set up, it didn't tell me what concentration unit it wanted the answer in. So we're just going to assume that since it gave me a concentration in molarity, it's going to want to find a concentration of molarity. And again, what we really want to know is how much solute is present compared to the solvent that's present. So when we're talking about how much solute, let's talk about moles. So step one, let's figure out how many moles of glucose we have in this small amount of stock solution. So 85 milliliters, convert that over to liters times concentration moles per liter, and we get to moles. Make sure your units cancel out. Once we have those moles, now that number of moles is just going to end up being in a larger amount of solution. So moles of glucose divided by the new total volume of solution gives me the new concentration of glucose. Since I've got four sig figs going into this calculation, I better round this to four sig figs coming out. So the answer is 0 0.6299 molars. Now, that's not that hard, um, and we could do it step by step, but everybody always wants an easy way. And since we're going to be looking at dilutions a lot, it's worth the little bit of time to talk about going through this with a little bit quicker formula. Now, thinking about that, what was the important step? The important step there was getting to moles. And the important concept here is the moles that we have in our small volume of stock is equal to the moles that are in the total volume of the new diluted solution. So if those are both equal, we can set that up this way and to break this down into a little bit shorter um, descriptors, the volume of the stock solution times the concentration of the stock solution is equal to the volume of the final solution times the concentration of the final solution. Now that's a little bit more commonly expressed as 
C1, V1 equals C2, V2. So con C is concentration, V is volume. And this is a little bit more general because our concentration doesn't always have to be in units of molarity and our volume doesn't always have to be in liters. So C1, V1 equals C2, V2 works for a lot of different concentration units and for a lot of different volume units. Let's just look back at that exact same problem. <coughs> and this time, plug numbers into the formula. So C1V1 equals C2V2, same problem. I've got 1.482 molar solution. That's my C1. V1 is 85 milliliters of that. C2 is what I'm trying to find. V2 is 200 milliliters. And boom, I end up with 0.6299 molar milliliters cancels out so we're left with molarity as our concentration unit now one thing that causes a little bit of problem here is why do milliliters work right molarity is moles per liter but if we really think about that this conversion factor to go from milliliters to liters is going to be present on both sides and if the exact same thing is present on both sides of an equation, it all just cancels out. So in some sense, we are using liters, but because we've got the same conversion on both sides, that conversion cancels out so we can go ahead and just use milliliters straight up in our original problem. Now related to that, just a couple of notes here. It really doesn't matter what volume units you use because for any volume unit you're going to have that same type of conversion factor on both sides that cancels we could use gallons we could use buckets full as long as we use a standardized bucket as our unit and we would get uh, just as good of a result it also doesn't make any real difference which you call condition one and which one you call condition two so um, yeah, you know, in that previous one, I set up the stock as condition one and the diluted solution as condition two. But really, because this is such a simple little formula, as long as you keep the ones together and the twos together, it doesn't matter which one you call which. Depending where you look, you'll also see this listed in a lot of different ways. So you might see a CIVI equals CFVF for initial and final conditions you might see it as m1 v1 equals m2 v2 specifically for molarity um, or mi li for specifically molarity and initial concentration final concentration or final conditions um, times liters so these are all the exact same thing they're just a little bit different ways to to look at them and remember this is a shortcut make sure you understand why the shortcut works and make sure you understand what's behind the shortcut before you just start plugging things in because if you just start plugging things in it can lead to things not being quite right uh, if you apply it in a way that's not quite right which brings up a warning and this is one that i'm especially sensitive to C1 V1 equals C2 V2 is a wonderful little formula that is used for dilutions. And that is all it is used for. Depending where you look, depending um, what sources you, you look at, they might try to use something that looks an awful lot like C1 V1 equals C2 V2 for some other types of calculations. But don't do it. If you really look at it, it's not right. And more importantly, it'll lead you to apply it in ways that will give you wrong results um, moving forward. So use the right tool for the right job, um, even if the wrong tool sometimes works by accident. All right, let's take one more look at an example. Um, this is an undilution, so we're kind of going in the other direction. Uh, you have diluted one milliliter of manganese 3 aqueous stock solution, again, there's that word stock, to 12 milliliters with water. 
the concentration of manganese 3 plus in the diluted solution is 6.341 millimolar. What is the manganese plus 3 concentration in the original stock solution? Now again, this is going the other way. It doesn't matter what direction we go. It doesn't matter what we call 1 and 2 as long as we keep them together. So we've got to pick some things out. I've got one milliliter of stock. So that's one milliliter of some unknown concentration. That's what I'm looking for is equal to 12 milliliters of 6.341 millimolar stock. Solve that for C1 and our units cancel. We end up with 76.1 millimolar rounding off to the three sig figs that we're limited to by this 1.00 milliliters. So that's just a quick uh, little run through on dilution. We're going to use this a lot. You're going to use this constantly. So this is something that you'll get familiar with pretty quick. Good luck.